This is the PXN V10 wheel, pedal, and shifter set. This is the follow-up to PXN's V9 set, which did not have force feedback. This V10 does, so it's targeting the Logitech G29 Thrustmaster T150 in the entry and beginner level sim racing market. And those have been the kings of the entry level sim racing hardware market for so long that I'm curious to see what this V10 can do because as Omar from The Wire says, you come at the king, you best not miss. All right, so as mentioned, this is the PXN V10 wheel pedal and shifter set. And this was sent to me for review by PXN free of charge, but the opinions and words are all mine. So as also mentioned in the intro, uh, this is the follow-up to the PXN V9. I reviewed that previously. It's an okay starter set, but it notably lacks force feedback, and that's one criticism that's followed it. So PXN has come back with this V10, and hopefully they're trying to compete. And what they're trying to do is compete in that entry-level sim racing space. But we'll see, because it's a tough mountain to climb. Uh, in my opinion, the Logitech G29 is king of that entry-level space at this point, so we'll see what the V10 has to offer. So what I'm going to do in this video is get it unboxed, talk about what's included in the set, then I'll get it mounted on the rig, try it out. I'm going to try it on both console and PC because it is compatible with a number of consoles as well as PC. And then, of course, I'm going to give my thoughts on it. So this is my review of the PXN V10. All right, so we'll start off going through the components by talking about this wheelbase. This is, of course, the most discussed item about this V10. Um, will this be better than the V9? Well, it'll come down to the force feedback. So fairly small form factor here, and it comes with this bracket. I didn't assemble this. It's got this bracket sort of holding the whole thing down and then sort of a table clamp, which is kind of interesting. And it's got these rubber feet on it. Not sure if you guys can see that, but it's got rubber feet on it. And so it looks like this lip would sort of butt up against the edge of your desk. And then there's pre-drilled holes as well. So if you have a sim rig or, or want to bolt this down onto directly onto your desk or onto a piece of wood to hold it in place, whatever it is, it looks like you have that option. So there is also a collar here that looks like it tightens down on the wheel. The wheel is back here. I'll get that on in a second. I'm trying to think what it's compared to in terms of size, but uh, it's not actually that big, probably about six inches in diameter this way and uh, maybe about four or five inches high. And then looking at the back, of course, there's the power um, socket here. And then up right above it was where the pedals plug in. Then you have a switch that can switch it from 270 degrees of rotation to 900 degrees of rotation. And then above that, an RJ plug for the shifter. And then in the lower left, looking at the back of the unit, there's a USB plug and it has a controller symbol. So uh, you would plug your controller into that. And then of course the USB cord. So it looks like they've got everything covered here, but a very interesting design with this sort of overall bracket and uh, holding it down onto this uh, table mount. So it looks like all the bolts are exposed. So if you wanted it out of this shell uh, and just wanted the base itself, you could. With that said, I don't know how you would clamp it at that point. So interesting to see. It's a, it's a big clamp obviously and uh, might be a bit much, but uh, we'll see how it performs. And that outer outer uh, clamp, the, uh, the uh, top part is kind of a shiny plastic and then the bracket itself at the bottom appears to be metal with rubber feet. And moving on now to the pedals, and it's a three pedal set. So of course you got your clutch brake and accelerator and um, each has a unique colored spring here. Um, appears very similar in concept to like the uh, T3PM pedals, I think they are. So uh, metal here, metal pedal faces, but then plastic out back. And these springs, I don't know if they offer various levels of resistance or what or why they're color coded. Uh, accelerator, I would say is a bit easier. Clutch slightly harder and then brake. Brake is the hardest, but I can still depress it the full distance uh, just <laughs> with my hand. So I think that's going to feel very light underfoot. So cool to see a three pedal set. Cool to see the uh, metal, what would you say, foot plate and metal pedal faces. Sorry, no, you guys can't see that. Metal pedal faces, uh, metal foot plate, but I don't know. Overall, a lot of plastic used. And then these springs, I don't know. Could these springs be replaced? 
doesn't really look like it would be that easy. Um, oh, there is perhaps some adjustment here. Um, I don't want to play around with it too much. I'm going to leave it in default, but uh, it looks like there are some nuts on the back here that could be adjusted to increase or decrease the tension. But again, I don't want to mess around with it too much. Um, I'll probably leave it stock for the purposes of this review. But those are the pedals. So three pedal set. And next we have the H pattern shifter. Um, so it looks like we have five gears plus reverse. Reasonably nice action on it. So hard to tell before you drive, but uh, good throw distance. And then it's got uh, buttons on the top, one for parking brake and the other for low to high. Oh yeah, I think if you do truck sims, you can flip it and uh, have the high gears mapped as well. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, reasonably nice action. It, it feels a lot like uh, the Thrustmaster Shifter TH8A. Less gears, obviously, but uh, similar kind of throw action. So I I'm actually the most impressed so far with this. It does have a plastic shift knob, uh, which is nothing too impressive, but um, yeah, feels all right. And then of course we have the wheel, uh, 270 millimeter. I measured this before I rolled camera and uh, it's got a bunch of buttons on the front. So color coded, uh, yellow, red, blue, green. And then it looks like we have, it looks like it's got the, does it have the PlayStation? Yeah, it's got the PlayStation markings and um, yeah, L3, R3, uh, the shifters. You might be thinking clutch, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe even these bottom ones that don't have a click, I believe those are digital. I don't believe they're analog, uh, but R1 and L1, uh, my main shifters, those are definitely digital. You can just hear that click. So no magnetic shifters or anything like that. But these lower shifters, which by the way, not sure if you guys can see that, but they don't line up. So there's a bit, <laughs> bit of quality issue there and then uh yeah even though there's not a click on the lower shifters i would have to believe that they are not analog because they are marked uh l2 and r2 um or maybe they are maybe they are yeah because i'm just thinking of uh the playstation controller and those are analog so maybe we do have analog paddles here that's kind of cool um and then up down left right arrows there um l3 r3 on the front and then i mentioned earlier about the collar that's on the uh on the wheelbase and that would of course tighten down onto this threaded uh what would you call it throat i guess so yeah, that's basically the wheel. Um, it's suede on the outside, actually has a really nice feel. Um, 270 millimeter across the top. It's got this flat bottom, so it looks um, like a racing wheel. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Overall feels pretty nice. I mean, it's un undoubtedly there's a lot of plastic. This thing weighs next to nothing. Uh, but in terms of the finish, I mean, it's a pretty good finish. That suede on the outside, um, metal front here. Is that pressable? Yeah, the center button is pressable. And um, yeah, overall feels pretty good. Um, and then these are your table clamps for the wheelbase. So if you uh, don't have a rig and want to mount this directly onto a table, you can uh, somehow use these. I probably won't use them uh, or maybe I'll just test them. But uh, yeah, these are the table clamps. So they somehow, I don't know how exactly, but uh, I would have to believe that somehow these attach to the wheelbase and then you can uh, clamp this onto your table. And then of course we have all of the necessary, There's, here's the power for the uh, wheelbase and then a couple extra cables as well, presumably to go between the pedals and the wheelbase, for example. Yeah, it looks like there's an RJ45 in there and then a USB cord, USB A to C. And then a couple other USB cables and then some screws to get it all connected. And of course we have the user manual. So, um, yeah, that's what's included. You get a lot, you definitely get a lot. And, um, yeah, so now it is time to get it mounted and uh, start testing the PXN V10. All right. So time for my thoughts on driving with the PXN V10. And I'll tell you that I first used the V10 with Gran Turismo Sport and Assetto Corsa on my PlayStation 4. And it connected pretty easily. The PlayStation just sees it as a keyboard extension of your controller. And from there, I started driving in GT Sport, and the feel was decent. Not great, but decent. Curb vibrations were all but non-existent, but major bumps to the car could definitely be felt. And there was a bit of road noise. So I was pretty neutral on the feel of the V10. 
But it went sharply downhill from there. I booted up Assetto Corsa on my PlayStation and both my controller and the V10 disconnected. I had to shut down the PlayStation and boot it again. And then I did get the wheel working again in GT Sport. So I decided to try Assetto Corsa again and it did work for about five minutes and then it disconnected again. So uh, that was it for my experience with my PlayStation 4. But next I moved the wheel to my primary rig and I tried it in Assetto Corsa on PC or I tried to use it on Assetto Corsa on PC. And even though the wheel was being recognized by Content Manager, the axis just showed the wheel being fully left the whole time. But for one last test, I booted up Automobilista 2 and I'm happy to say that I finally found what the PXNV10 does best. The force feedback was reasonably well detailed and I could feel most curbs and there was definitely a decent amount of road noise and frankly plenty of strength even when I set the overall gain to 60% in the PXN app. Anything above that, the feel got really coggy and there's expected to be a coggy feeling in the V10 as there would be with any entry level gear based wheel but generally it performed well in AMS2 and that was definitely the highlight of my testing. All right, guys, so time to wrap things up. Time for my final thoughts on the PXN V10 uh, entry level sim racing system. And I'll start with the good things I like about the PXN V10. Uh, number one is the wheel itself. This actually seems like a really good wheel. Um, I like the shape of it. I like this suede finish of it. I like the fact that it's got analog paddles. Um, if you're on PC, that's a that's a good feature. I own a lot of wheels and very few have those analog paddles, so that's cool to see. And the second thing is this mount, and I did end up uh, clamping this onto my rig, and it was extremely solid. Um, so the little arms they give you, these guys, um, actually work really, really well, and they're simple to get attached and they hold well. And also this mount allows you to adjust the angle of the wheelbase, which I think is really cool. So you can get that suited to your liking. And it also has the ability to clamp onto a sim racing rig. If instead of clamping onto a desk, you're hard mounting to a rig. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, third thing is the shifter. Um, it's nothing exceptional, frankly, but at the price point, I think it performs very well. And of course the compatibility definitely goes in the pros category for the PXN V10. The fact that you can can uh, jump between Xbox, PlayStation, and PC all without adjusting anything is, is very impressive actually. And lastly, you guys heard my thoughts when I was driving, but uh, when it performed in AMS2, it actually performed really well. I was pretty happy with the force feedback overall and it's got decent strength, uh, just that inconsistency is killer. So moving on to things I don't like, and of course the beginning, middle, and end of the con section could be the fact that it didn't work in half the sims I tried it in. A set of course I just would not recognize it on my PC. Um, and then when I played Gran Turismo Sport, it would spontaneously disconnect. Uh, Assetto Corsa, it would spontaneously disconnect. So that inconsistency is absolutely killer. So, I mean, that that's a huge con, obviously. And then also in the cons category, the brake pedal, it feels cheap. Not that I'm expecting load cell levels of quality at this price point, um, but your foot just pushes to the floor right away. And for not much more, they could have put a stiffer spring in there. Granted, you might have children using the PXN V10, so maybe they kept it soft uh, to sort of target that market. But broadly speaking, uh, it's way too soft. And the third con is definitely the price. Um, I mentioned off the top of this video facetiously that you come at the king, you best not miss. And I was really hoping that PXN V10 would come in much cheaper than its competitors, but unfortunately it does not. So um, that's, that's a big con. So it would have to do something uh, spectacular otherwise to justify that price. And I haven't seen it yet. And that's largely where I land in my fourth point that kind of sums up my experience with the PXN V10 is that this is entering a very tough market and it and in order to compete it would have to be significantly better in some dimension and I can't see it it's not as if the force feedback is so much better it's not as if the price is so much better it's not as if the build quality is so much better it's another wheel it's decent for what it is um again those compatibility compatibility issues are killer um but let's say they get those solved and, and it works with everything moving forward it still doesn't have anything i can see that makes it stand out i mean are there good parts yes i like the wheel uh, i like the mount and a few other things that i talked about earlier 
there's nothing so exceptional that would make me say, forget Logitech, forget Thrustmaster, go with PXN. I just haven't seen it yet. Again, it does have good features, but nothing that just jumps out at me as people should consider this. So uh, unfortunately, guys, that's kind of where I land with it. Decent wheel, um, lots of interesting features to look at. Um, but it just doesn't stand out. And I think Logitech and Thrustmaster, I, I don't think there's competition from PXN, if I'm being totally honest. So, um, yeah, it's cool to see them make steps forward from the V9, but this is not the answer that uh, beginner and entry-level sim racers are looking for, frankly. All right, but uh, just the same, thank you to PXN for sending this through. Um, I enjoyed reviewing it. It just doesn't jump out as exceptional in the uh, entry to er, beginner and entry level uh, sim racing market. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.